The FF Dynasty presents Married to the Game. For your pleasure. Let's start the show. Quick track, which is from tail. It never gets old, the old Tenacious D after the uh, fresh crack of a beer. It, it might get old at some point. Yeah, somebody right? somebody hates it. <laughs> like, if I hear that <laughs> song again. <laughs> All right. Well, we've, we're have going to kick today's uh, show. We're going to kind of have some discussions about... ADP and value and all that stuff. We kind of just did that with some free agents. We're going to just go into regular agents here. Um, <laughs> these guys are not free. Yeah. Um, and we're going to start off with Josh Gordon. We've had quite a few inquiries about what to do with Josh Gordon um, in this off season here. And I'm just going to start off with one super flex question that we got. It was Alex Smith or Josh Gordon, Alex Smith with Josh Gordon or breeze and the one eleven. And to me, it's Alex Smith and Josh Gordon by a landslide, and it's not even close for for me personally. In the in talking super flex and all that stuff, like Alex Smith was like QB three to five last year. I don't know if you realize this, but Breeze' whole game has changed. He's like forty. Alex Smith is like thirty five, and Josh Gordon, I'm I'm valuing him more than the one eleven. Right. I just, well, I, you I would think, be if that's your landslide. Right. But, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think I'm not super concerned about Josh messing up again i could understand you wanting to ring the register if you carried josh gordon for a while but i mean the dude wants to get paid he he's already been down the road of saying you know i i screwed up i need to figure this out i'm going to put this on me i'm going to take the accountability and i'm, I'm assuming he's going to at least have to get you're at least going to get this season out of him he's at least got to get work himself into a payday before he's going to try to screw something up again right well i mean not that i'm a psychiatrist or anything like that i have zero zero background on speaking on this but i feel like when what i see out of josh gordon now when when a guy gets to telling the examples and says well this is what i was doing you know when somebody says oh i'm sorry and i won't do that anymore that's one thing but when a guy goes and tells you hey, I did this, and this is what I was doing, and it gives actual life examples of what he was doing wrong. I was doing this. I was staying out all night. I was doing this. I was running with the wrong crowd. And not, not he more, I don't have the specific story in front of me, but he was literally giving the details on where and what he was doing when he knows he shouldn't do it. Yeah. So maybe just a little bit more of an honest turnaround instead of, Oh yeah, I went to rehab and I'm good now. I'm ready to roll. Yeah, and that that oh, we well, did that once. Exactly, exactly. That was the first time and it didn't work. And but now, like Casey said, he's been down the road two or three times. He's been down the wrong road all the way down to the end. Turned around and came back again. Yeah, the, I I completely get it. If you own Josh Gordon in your dynasty league and you're like, if he messes up again, he's gone forever. So I get zero. I pull, I I get it. If you want to turn that into something else, but. Like Casey's saying, he's already gone all the way down there and he's come back. If you could just stomach it, I mean, yeah. the dude goes and misses three years in a row and then he comes out and gets four for 85 against professionals. Right. The talent is there. You've seen him lead the league in yardage, I believe, oh, yeah. a couple of years Absolute, ago. Absolutely. He's just been... he He's he's better than... He's one of those guys that when he's played, he's better than anybody else on the field. Yeah. yeah. He's he, transcendent talent. He it's is. It's undeniable. And I watched the whole thing where he... I watched his interview where he just basically sat down and responded to everything that he could. And it was, I think he was in day 70 of his hundred and something days that he spent in uh, rehab. And it was a, it was an honest, like beaten, humble dude that was, that knew the path in front of him to take. And I mean, we're playing dynasty fantasy football here. There's so many things that can that get chalked up to luck and, and, and it's a game of inches and all that as far as winning week to week. But I think you have to have the mentality of taking some home run cuts and, and swinging for fences when there's some value on a guy like this because of this persona that he's created for himself, rightly so. Mm -hmm. But I think I'm ready to live and let live. I moved on. I forgave. I'm I'm not worried. I don't. I think I'm ready to. I mean, I guess I'm a little bit worried, but who cares? Let's, let's you got to be a little the concerned. I, yeah, I think if you say you're not worried at all, I just don't think you're not being, worried at all. I'm not right. saying that. Yeah, but I'm not worried enough and, to not swing and not you I'm, either. I'm even, but like to, to all, there's only one John Josh Gordon owner in every league. And I mean, obviously, what, so. I mean, I, I, and with all this in account, going back to the trade, like 
what are you really doing with the 111? You're you're Taking swinging a stab. on, on a guy a who could never be any good. At least I know if Josh Gordon's out there, he's going to be good. This is a, a guy good point. who had a thousand day plus absence from even touching a practice field. He came back and I don't even know what week he came back, but it was near the end of the season this year. He kept himself in that was week 13, pretty decent shape and was able to come out there and, and puts up 12, 12 and a half points against the, uh, the Ch- LA Chargers comes back and puts up 15 points against Green Bay, puts up 9.7 against Baltimore, um, and finishes up against, or uh, sorry, 9.7 against Green Bay, 3.9 against Baltimore. So he has a down game against Baltimore, but that's one of the better, that was one of the better pass defenses in the league this year. Yeah, well, something must be wrong on my screen. I showed Baltimore, he went 5 for 47, and at Chicago went 2 for 19. Okay, so. yeah, I got I got, I got got it mixed up. Yeah, You're something, right. okay. Well, but then, like you said, last game of the season against finishes division up. rival, the yeah. Steelers. The Steelers don't want to see this dude do good. Four for 115. Finishes up with 15 <laughs> points against Pittsburgh. Now, it was week 17. They were they were kind of yeah. locked in and all that. But still, he comes out. He puts together a bunch of decent performances with you know, a not great quarterback situation, a not great team situation. He's on the field around 90% of the time with just coming back and, and doing well with his time on the field. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm fully okay with investing in Josh Gordon from here on out. How well, high, how high would you go? Well, he's to, at forty three right here, and I mean, I think that's I'm more than comfortable taking him there. You trading? You still on? I'm, I'll trade a first for sure. Yeah, I mean, I've, you could, I just said I'll give you. Basically, you're trading Alex Smith for Breeze, and you're trading Josh Gordon for the one eleven in the super flex trade or whatever. And I'm a one eleven. I'll I got a one ten right now or whatever. If you want whoever has Josh Gordon wants to give me him for the one ten, I'll take it all day long. <laughs> well, it's. This this is a this is a interesting off season we go into because the, we have a very fresh on our minds the Kareem Hunts of the world and the Alvin Kamara's of the world the one ten the one eleven the one twelve the two ones of last year's drafts that just all were awesome home run cuts. Let's just not forget in recent years those same picks were just absolutely horrendous horrendous. So I completely see what you're saying there, Casey. Um, the thing that you do with a 111, what are you going to do with it? If you get somebody that's 22 years old, you have some hope for a couple of years. But Josh Gordon, after everything he's been through, dude's 26. Yeah. You know, so there will never, ever be a time when you're like not thinking, what if he messes up? But if, you, if you're if you in this spot, if you picked him up last year, he was been on and off waivers three times over the last three years because yeah. people were wondering. Always coming back. It's coming always back. I'll pick him up. Yeah. yeah, and it doesn't come back, so you dropped him again. So you could have picked him up. You didn't. You didn't. You might not have had him for three years. You could have had him for you know three months. Um, but th- now here he is. So if he's on your team, I can't fault you at all for wanting to trade him. But at the same time, like these guys, I, mean, I got two guys in here in front of me that are really good fantasy football players. They're ready to give you first round picks. I can't fault you for that. But at the same time, this dude, if he comes out and he plays good football, he could help you win a championship. He, he didn't even – there was no time spent in the offseason with any sort of team or any any of that. There was no time spent with a quarterback or any of that. Like, he came right back and just hopped right back into mm-hmm. production. Like Best guy now they, they did make a very assertive effort to get him involved. I mean, it was right. sick. Yeah, why not? Almost how much they were like, we got – Forget every other guy on our team was all about Josh Gordon right Let's now. Make sure we know what we got in this yeah. guy that we're about to bring good back. Point. Yeah. Now the thing about it, we're talking about you. You've briefly mentioned forty three though. So now there's two different things. There's an existing rosters and there's new rosters. So going into a dynasty startup with a brand new <laughs> roster and it pit it over at a average of forty three, you're in the middle of the fourth round of a dynasty startup. That might be a little rich for my blood mm, for the I'm investment. good. I think I think you're you're getting a play. Like if if there was no question marks by his name, he'd be in the first round. Right, this is true. This is true. It's a discount every way you look the at it. The discount is built in. That's a good point. That's just, it's just rich for my blood, but I get it. It, w- I get it. it won't be if he finishes as the number three tight end or tight end the number three receiver in the league next year okay so you know? just he's he evan or ingram's even, 42. even 10 if he finishes so, as the 10th best evan ingram's never been in trouble with the nfl he's 42 he's a budding star of the tight end group there's not a younger fresher better looking tight end than evan ingram and then you got the josh gordon who's when he's on the field he's the best wide receiver in the league almost so there you go 42 evan ingram 43 josh gordon so it's it's going to be interesting when the startups come around this year and how high he goes how high josh gordon goes for sure because there's Literally. no chance that it'll be 43 <laughs> there's no chance that it'll be 43 come july or august when you're drafting and, and people are there's just there's been articles on articles about how good josh gordon looks and oh yeah 
shorts and a t-shirt. So yeah, because I mean, you've already gotten. If you get to August and you got a late startup draft, and he hadn't gotten trouble yet, you only need a couple more weeks. Yeah. You only got to make it. But if you had that early startup in March, you got to wait all summer long, hoping he ain't getting in trouble. So if you got an early startup, I might steer a little farther away from it because you got a bigger bracket of time to hold. If you got a late startup, I might be a little more aggressive on the Josh Gordon bandwagon. So we're all we're all pretty much in the same camp. Some we, I, I probably maybe I, I have them a little higher valued than you two or your Jason. You seem like you're pretty close. I mean, with sure. with me and and Big Co's not too far behind. But I I thought we've gotten a lot of questions about them. That was just one of the trades that somebody hit us up about. And everybody's different. Like people were saying, landslide breeze and one one. To me, I think that's silly. I don't know why I want this 40-year-old quarterback who isn't even the same breeze as that he was. Right. And Alex Smith just is coming off one of his best years ever and can run around, right. which is going to, you know. then Well, the legs on Alex Smith and his ability to just move the chains with his legs will get first downs. Those rushing yards keep you give you a consistent floor. And like you said, I mean, last year he crushed it. He was, you know, QB three or four or whatever and definitely finished in front of Breeze. Breeze but, was like yeah, 13, 15. And, and, I mean, obviously Breeze could have had a couple more touchdown catches here that passes here or there through the season, but they definitely converted into a, hey, we got a decent defense. Let's pound a rock and stay in these games and not right. let's, let's not go 5-11 and 11 this year. We got two great know? backs. Right, right. So I don't think they're going to change their philosophy. I mean, Breeze let's it, keep Drew Breeze around because – Right, Breeze isn't getting any younger. I'm not saying Breeze isn't still awesome, yeah. but he's – able to scale the volume way back and still crush when well, you need him to throw the ball in the defense I mean, together he and tom brady are just defying yeah. you know the laws of time basically like it's breeze it and supposed to do what he's doing like it's not like you you know you're it's not a if it's a one year super flex you want to take breeze over alex smith all day long that's fine no doubt about it but the idea even then i don't even know if i do right i mean yeah sure i mean <laughs> you're probably gonna draft alex breeze smith higher has, than i have to draft alex smith and alex smith changes coaches changes teams and everything could yeah, be a little this bit, is true it might, might not just, be quite as powerful and high high power offense because he was used to it or and, it could be even better and andy reed were right there together it could, could be, be even better. better i don't think it get, i don't think it gets better i mean than at, last one, year at one point smith, you know we were really praising uh, old Gruden over there in, in Redskins land about his offensive prowess in Cincinnati and that's pretty much why he has a job. There's no reason to say that they can't cook up a good scheme over there with Alex Smith. Anyway, let's get back to the Saints real quick. We want to keep moving down this list. We got Ingram at 50. So Breeze's boy. What do you guys think about that? You think that's cheap money or expensive money? <laughs> I think it's probably right on par. I don't know. I don't know if it's it's I don't think it's cheap money, but maybe it could be. I mean, if you're in... I think it might be a, a touch disrespectful. Yeah. Well, he did have a ridiculous year. He is coming off one of the most ridiculous years. Definitely the best year he's he is ever a little had. Old. He's going to be 20... I think he's 27 right now, so he'll be 28 at some point. That's how that age thing works. <laughs> well, uh, it's, it's calling him 28 right now. Okay. So he is a little bit old. He is going to be a saint next year, though. So... This whole thing could get filled up again. Yeah. And if you're looking for a one-year workhorse running back, then I'm all in on Mark Ingram. I have Mark Ingram on a team of mine. And part of me knows that he's dealt with some injuries. He he get, he gets nicked up. He has in the past. He's good till like week 12 and something pops. I, and it, But last year it was glorious. Last year it was all the way healthy. And I think Kamara helped with that. And he also just you know didn't have any bad luck in that regard. Part of me... Wants to ring the register and kind of sell them and sell super high here and try and get something, you know, something maybe a little younger, maybe a little shinier, maybe a package or something. Part of me wants to. They usually have to pay alimony for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Part of me wants to sell them, but then the other part of me knows that I have a decent squad and that I'm going to compete for the playoffs and into the playoffs, I think. And I want him around next year. I want him on my team as a workhorse as I go and try and win a championship. So I, I've contemplated it, and I don't think I'm going to move him. But if I had a bad squad, and he sure. was the only good dude on my team, or, or one of the best, which he is anyway, he is one of the best dudes on my team right now, and I kind of want to move him, but I'm not going to. I'm, I'm, I'm ready to fill this thing up again, and then just if, if next year, if he's not a saint, which it won't be the same for Mark Ingram if he's not a saint and he's going to be another year older, another we're, we're approaching that 30-year mark. If I was looking super towards the future, I'd maybe try and move him for a haul. But if you if you're trying to compete, I I think uh, I think that's not a bad buying spot. I don't think it's the cheapest money, in my opinion, but it's a solid. It's even money. It's even. <laughs> it's well, money. 
at twenty eight, it's just money. At, it's just money. It's just <laughs> money. Got to put. Got to spend it somewhere. Uh, at fifty, it right here in Mark Ingram at twenty eight. He's the oldest running back by far, and anybody, all the running backs ahead of him on this list are younger. Um, Mark Ingram definitely earned this position from where he was. The next what he good did. back is Shady at seventy, and he's twenty nine. Just about just to say to be that. Kinda, I, that was the, that was my neck. You just said it. I mean, my next thing was Shady's twenty nine, and he's at seventy. And I don't. Shady was probably around fifty last year, and I guess because he went from twenty eight to twenty nine, he dropped twenty spots. But Shady did nothing. Um, I mean, as a Shady o- owner myself, and he helped uh, us go to a third place finish in one of our FFPC leagues. He did nothing to earn twenty spot drop. I mean, other than turning twenty nine and being a running back. Yeah. So your investment, just like just like Jay Wayne just said, in a twenty eight year old running back in Mark Ingram, it is for a obvious win now situation. And if you've gone and and purchased in your first three picks here in the in a startup, and you got Corey Davis and a couple other very young players, Mark Ingram might not be a best the best stab for you here at fifty. Um, that being said, if you got a couple of picks here feeling good about it, then you can just tally it up and grab market Martin. There's no doubt about right. it. Mark Ingram's going to be successful. I this guess year. I could maybe argue the other way is like he's kind of like the last one here. I mean, a Jai's here at, at 56, but you don't really know exactly. He's obviously much younger, but you don't know what you're getting. I think if Ingram coming back to the Saints, you know what's about to happen. You know it's what true. you're going to get, and you're going to get a productive player at 50, regardless of his age. And oh, I, I you know, I, I think. I think that would kind of the, who's like Tevin Coleman is is I mean Shady's the next guy on the list at seventy that I would want any part of trying to build as far a as running, running back goes, stable yeah. out of I get even, it even if these dudes are are a little older you know I get it well like it, that's just it like his age there's no doubt about it like even if Mark Ingram tears it up this year he's not going to go forward on this list he's he's all, he just tore it up and he's only at fifty you're right so like it, it has there's a there's a element of a little bit of disrespect there for what Mark Ingram's done to his owners in the past to have him at fifty because if if he was two years younger he would obviously be what you know way up on this list so uh, I mean I don't mind grabbing like just what Casey said you definite production coming out of the Saints backfield for Mark Ingram next year. It's not a bad way to to win, but you just got to know what you're getting yourself into because he's not going to go up any. Yeah, that's fair. Mark Ingram or Nick Chubb right there is at 49. Right. I mean, it's, I'm not prepared to say that right now without landing spot on Nick Chubb, but that's a good question. I mean, do you build for the future? So, uh, you there's prob there's little chance that Nick Chubb outproduces Mark Ingram next year. But at the end of the day, Mark Ingram's not turning 29. Mark Ingram will be 29 next year and Nick Chubb will be 23. Right, yeah. you know. So that's just it's how you play the game is sure. dependent on opinion there. But like you said, Casey, you got you got Shady at seventy, so you could make you know take your Nick Chubb in one round or, or grab yourself a Sterling Shepard or a Will Fuller. You can grab Will Fuller there at fifty one, and then get Shady next round and have yeah. your have that talent for running back and you know a Will Fuller who's only twenty three now, who went in the lineup with uh, Deshaun. Deshaun looked like a just unstoppable force so obviously this is a huge jump up for for a guy like will fuller like you're talking about would you would you guys be are you buy buying selling or kind of holding on on the will fuller train here at 50 that's a that's a, a significant jump i'm Signif- sure from huge from jump where he was will. huge i mean jump people always will. liked will fuller because of the speed but he he showed it and his quarterback showed that he can facilitate oh exactly everything that that will fuller needs so one are you buying or selling or or holding and two are you are you into the 51 adp if it's a redraft well thank you for saying that because uh, you know last year we spent all off season long apparently uh, ourselves and elliot chris and chris gets credit for it but nobody's sitting here reminding everybody that ff dynasty told you how good deshaun watson was but will fuller he is a speedster and everybody knew that he's a first round speedster but then all of a sudden Deshaun Watson's arm isn't too weak and the lack of velocity isn't an issue and Will Fuller's getting touchdown after touchdown after touchdown when he's in the, when those two are in the same spot in the lineup so it at 50 here it, wait a second arm velocity doesn't matter <laughs> yeah right it <laughs> oh. did it the, oh, Shit. the the quarterback, the quarterback not throwing the ball as hard as possible. The hard, he wasn't the hardest. That's not the draft. one single thing he, he wasn't. Can... He wasn't Ryan Mallett, and it didn't hurt him. Oh, man, yeah. right? It's crazy how that so works. And if, people had the audacity to question that man's accuracy. Come on, too. man. If I'm if I got Will Fuller right now, there's no way I'm selling him. 
There's yeah, a, well, that's absolutely. a big turnaround for you because you are not a Will Fuller believer. I know, but what well, if you cannot look? You can't watch those games where Will Fuller and Deshaun were on the same on the field together and be like, "Oh my God!" If you cannot <laughs> yeah. watch that and and think Will Fuller's not going to be and, awesome, and there was plenty of deep threat, you know, that you were seeing there, but there was definitely some more parts and pieces to Will Fuller's game this year yeah. than, than you know, and he's growing and learning, and I think he's it's going to be really tough. To guard Will Fuller and DeAndre Hopkins, those two together, and and Watson's legs—that's the whole key. Like the the one of the reasons that Watson is going is now like one of the first quarterbacks taken, and he just could set the world on fire. Here he is at sixty six in the ADP, and right behind Russell Wilson and A. Rodge. One of the reasons that everything was so dynamic for him was because he had those legs stretch the defense out. Those he's he's got DeAndre Hopkins, which is obviously one of the best young receivers in the game. But when Will Fuller's running his routes where nobody can keep up with him, safeties have to try to another level of speed. Safeties are backpedaling deep for Will Fuller, but they're also making sure that Watson's not breaking. Remember that touchdown he had for fifty yards his first game he played? Yeah. That I'm talking about Deshaun Watson running. running. Yes. That was all they could do against Cincinnati. That was his first Thursday game. Night, he, did, he didn't know what to do, Mm-mm. but he ran it in for a touchdown. He knew, and won he knew the game. how to win. Exactly. Which is what he's always known how to do. If you got Will Fuller, you can't sell him and right I now. And I just saw some stuff where I don't know. They maybe they were measuring him with some sort of radar gun, but they were saying that his his ball velocity is is pretty solid it, now. What what in actual test. game bad footage? Test, yeah. yeah. Well. I mean, when you're just out there throwing throwing the ball, getting measured by the radar gun, who gives a shit? It's when I'm in a game, can I put it where it needs to be, mm-hmm. when it needs to be there? I mean, plus you get that 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 adrenaline pumping, yeah. and everything's better. So Big Co is not selling. No, and he is okay with pulling the trigger. <laughs> I'm at a habitual on, seller. I know. I'm okay with selling. But he's I, a, I'm not selling Will Fuller. He's okay with pulling the trigger at 51 for Fuller. How about how about you, uh, Jay Wayne? Yeah, I mean, I'm not at Jay selling. Wayne's world. You, you know, you know, Jay Wayne's world isn't selling anyone. <laughs> um, no, I mean, I, I'm I'm in a, I'm in at 51. I'm in to hold. I would try to buy. I guess he's so lethal. It's just so lethal. I think anybody that has him, you're gonna be have a tough time. Prying I'm sure it's probably pretty hard. Probably if, if somebody's sleeping at the wheel, would Will Fuller? If I could take mm. any of these wide receivers that are on this list right around this area and go get Will Fuller, I would totally do it. Um, which I think we're about to talk about a couple which, of which these guys name, right here. Name some of these guys real quick. I mean, Devin Funches at 52. He's one spot uh, uh, behind Will Fuller. I would absolutely There's, trade Devin Funches to try and get Will Fuller. To me, there needs to be a much bigger gap between Fuller and Funches. I mean, there's one spot difference, I'm, 51, 52. I'm with you. That I mean, he was next on the list to talk about just and kind of put him up against Will Fuller, but but you just did, and I'm, I think we're all in agreement. There's no chance that I wouldn't want Will Fuller over Funches. I don't dis, dislike Funches, but if, if, I, if his ADP is 52 and that's really how highly people think of him, I'm selling the shit out of Devin Funches. I'm sorry. I just am. I know he came, came alive and made a bunch of truthers really happy <laughs> last year, but... I mean, they're already talking about how we, we need we need some other guys over here, and Funches is, probably needs to be a two, which is fine. More tight end. Or, <laughs> no, I mean, he, proved, he did well. He proved he, he himself, well. and and he played well. I mean, and he was hurt most of the season. He had a shoulder issue, but I'm 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 selling Devin Funches if, for that, if this for is 52. if this is for real here. If somebody's really about that life, he's got to go. I was at, well, how do you feel about him, Pico? I mean, it's we're all in Will Camp Will Fuller here. So Funchess at fifty two, I'm I'm out on that. Yeah, I'm de- I can cash out on Funchess at fifty two. If I have felt Funchess, I'm not. I mean, I would look around for somebody wanting to buy him high. I wouldn't sell him low. No, he definitely, no. He definitely the, clearly. He, yeah, at fifty two. If that's how you're gonna, you know. But if you scroll over and somebody takes him at 68 in one of these mocks, somebody takes him at 42. It's all over the board. It takes one guy to love him to 42, and it takes a, a draft room to kick him down to 68. So, I mean. He Funch has definitely played a lot better last year than than most of us expected him to, and with the you lo, they you know, ship the, Kelvin out the, the loss of Kelvin Benjamin and Greg Olson being hurt, they've just there's really nowhere else for the ball yeah. to go. Curtis Samuel got right. hurt on him, so there, I just don't feel like I'm definitely not buying Funches for this price at all. If I have Funches, I'm going to make it. I'm going to try to pretend like I really love him and and send him off for some big time stuff and then maybe work my way backwards on a on a uh you know an acceptable offer but I I wouldn't purchase him for this price no way no no way <laughs> Jason Jason's eyes lit up Mm-mm. he can't see him he said Mm-mm, no way Mm-mm. all right 
So Just throwing it to me? No. <laughs> throwing Just it to out. me? Get the hell out of here. Bat it down. <laughs> Get out of here. All right, let's take a quick bathroom break. We'll be back with more Married to the Game. All right, welcome back. You can hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. Join the discussion. You can uh, tell us that we're dumb or that we're really smart. Either one is okay <laughs> with me. Um, you can hit me up personally at IMC Myers. Big Co's at Dynasty Big Co. Jay Wayne's at Jay Wayne's World. Let's dive back into this thing. We're going to go to Detroit here, the Motor City. Mm -hmm. Marvin Jones has finally jumped his counterpart in Golden Tate in the ADP here, which one spectacular year here from from Jones, and he he's great. Are you buying into that? Do you like Jones ahead of Tate? First and foremost, I'll start with that question. Do you like Jones ahead of Tate? That's a toughie. That is a toughie because Tate Toughie has, but goody. I think Tate, I mean, we Mike got, could be out of there we got two. We got two different kind of receivers here. You know? You got a guy who's 90 catches a year in mm -hmm. Tate. And consistent in doing it. Right. And there's a lot of value in that consistency. And Marvin is, is more of like a kind of a bigger play kind of receiver. Right? Yeah, no doubt. Yes. Yards per catch is, is out, of the, out of this world. And um, he's just like a four for 80 and a touch kind of guy, seven for 100, two touchdowns kind of guy, six for 100 and a touch. I mean, he he puts up the big plays when he's putting them up. I am just pulled up his game log, and, yeah. man, when it's right, it's right. And for so, year, for the last couple of years straight, I mean, uh, the Lions have led the league, been up there in the tops of the league for attempts, and they haven't been able to Certainly aren't running the ball. No, exactly. Well, they, <laughs> they, they haven't been able to get this running game right. They keep saying they're going to pound the rock, and I keep telling you every offseason, I've told you that for two years in a row, that does not, don't believe them. <laughs> don't believe them. They're still going to air it out. And the best thing they have going is Matt Stafford, and they put some talent around him. And right now we're talking about Marvin Jones versus Golden Tate, but they got Galladay and Ebron. They got mouths to feed. I just that Golden Tate is, just makes a living with the yak and the making the, the – uh, just moving the chains. He's um, but say, kind of kind of safe. He's got 92 catches for a th just over a thousand yards, and Jones has got 61 catches for 1,100 yards. So it's just you're seeing two different types of ways to score fantasy right. points and out jo of these two. And, and they're Jones, used Jones had more touchdowns, and Tate had more catches. So in the PPR leagues, they're pretty much about the same. Jones probably outscored him a few points with the extra couple touchdowns there. But so Jones is a year and a half younger than Tate. And he's also on contract uh, for more years. Like this is Tate's last year on contract with the uh, Lions. They got Marvin through 2020, so he'll be a free agent in 21, according to the contract. Right. So I don't know if that weighs into the whole well, it, it has Jones to, versus Tate has question. to weigh in a little bit. But another thing too, though, about Tate, like dude doesn't get hurt. And Marvin Jones was his first. Like I was beating the drum for Marvin Jones last year. I was telling all you guys, like, listen, those first two, three games in the season last year, Jones was leading the league in yards. Stafford was just dropping the ball in on the very edge of the sidelines, and Jones was toe tapping and falling out for a forty-eight yard gain. That's what he was doing. He had two hundred yard receiving game in the beginning of the year last year, and just was tearing it up. It was a and deep threat. Just, just then he a got banged up. Big play guy, and he got banged up. And the same type of injuries that he had when he was in Cincinnati, which is why he didn't get a contract extension from the Bengals. And so I just I – I, now that Marvin Jones did it for a year and he's up here in the 54, and I saw previ I saw him just get traded. Somebody gave him away for a first-round pick in a 2019 first. I don't know that I can buy into Marvin Jones at 54. I was the one buying him at 100 last year. I would love to, but his injury history, I just don't know. I worry about that ankle or whatever it is, Jay Wayne. You kind of foot. It's that foot. That, that thing scares me. Tate, I know Tate's a little bit older, and I don't know if I'm buying t Tate at 58 either because I got him on almost all my teams, and he's been killing it with those 90 catches every year, but he's getting a little long in the tooth now. So it's, I'm not, I'm really, I'm really not sure. If I had to make a decision, I probably would take Marvin Jones because he's younger and he's explosive, but that foot worries me, and I know Golden Tate's going to lace him up for me every week. Yeah, I think I'm okay with with Marvin Jones being ahead of Golden Tate. I like I like what he's doing. I like the way he's, he's being used. Um, I think, again, he's a little younger. He'll be with Stafford for a little while longer. Um, so I, I'm okay with him being ahead of Tate. I like, I love the safety of Tate. I'm, I'm okay. I'm okay with always putting golden Tate on my team. If you're going to yeah. sit around and disrespect him, I got no problem with putting those catches on my team. He could go somewhere else for sure. They got Galladay kind of waiting in the wings here and, and Ebron, they just picked up his fifth year. So that's kind of interesting. 
how, how do you feel about it before we go get into any further discussion <laughs> here you tate or or marvin jones i guess i guess i would go jones over tate as well um but i'm kind of like big co here and i feel like 54 and 58 is I'm, I'm i'm looking for somewhere else. can i get up to 51 and get will fuller instead <laughs> really that's <laughs> sure that's kind of where I'm at, and then, and like then that. you got to take somebody here, though. So, you know, I, I I don't know. All right. Well, before we add one more guy to the mix here, let's Kenny Galladay's coming in. His ADP's at at 79 here, mm -hmm. so he's already getting a ton of love, and he's maybe kind of similar to what Marvin Jones does for this team. Yep. And he comes in, and you're expecting him to take a big step forward this year. Like, does that impact your decision on either one of these two guys to maybe... I mean, something's probably got to give here for... You know, they throw it to the backs a good bit. Ebron's coming back. He's He's been up and down. He had a decent uh, middle of the season and maybe end of the season. I don't have the numbers in front of me here. But, you know, there's volume... It's going to become a volume issue if there's this okay. many mouths to feed. And is who who do you think would be the odd man out? I, I don't I don't think it's Tate. Right. I don't not this year. Right. But I don't think you're drafting Galladay at 79 for necessarily for this year. Yeah. You're looking down the road. You're looking dynasty. And I don't think Galladay's presence there does anything for my opinion of Tate. I would I probably be trying to to sell Marvin Jones right now. Like not to get off of no that's uh, that's what we're here Galladay, to do right now. But I think that's. I think I'm trying to sell Marvin Jones, and I think because he Tate's maybe not as line dependent. Marvin, well, that doesn't make sense either. I don't know. Marvin could go somewhere else. He does have a lot of money they owe him. They could probably get out from that with guarantees. So he's not. It's not like he's going to be there for the next three years. If they got Galladay coming up, he's going to be cheap for the next three years. So Marvin could be expendable. So they could bring Tate back. Who knows what's going to happen with any of these dudes? I like Galladay's talent level, but at 79, that seems a little steep. So if their three receiver sets are Marvin, Galladay, and Tate in the slot, like... Sounds like to me, Matt Stafford's about to be a deal. Right. <laughs> If you tell that, that this is kind of, and like you said, I mean, Ebron, and I love Galladay. Ebron, I was telling y'all boys that, that don't don't draft any receivers and get Galladay late. That was your line, and you said it before anybody. I'll always give you credit for that. Casey was on Galladay super early, but seventy nine does seem a little high, and I think something's got to give here. So what is it? Well, uh, well, uh, it's Ebron, the running game. Ebron, <laughs> the yeah, running game is going to give up carries all their uh, anything. The the Ebron came on super strong towards the end of the year. Um, I I think you were right on. I think you're on the right track there, Jay Wayne. With Golden Tate's not lying dependent. Golden Tate is out there. He's going to get open and he's tough to tackle. And that there's that those are traits that travel. Right. Um. And but you saw right away, like I was like right away in 2016, first game of the season, there was a magic between Jones and Stafford. And if Jones would have stayed healthy, this would have happened last 2016. It started to happen it, last year. That's what I'm saying. It happened for a couple games and then he got nicked up. And so I think that Marvin Jones needs. Stafford more than Golden Tate needs Stafford. Galladay did nothing to disappoint in a rookie season. He he was just showed some tremendous no. flashes, and he's so, fantastic down the field. I think going forward, I'm taking out of this that Stafford's going to be underappreciated coming into the season. He's coming. He's doing the old Getting quote a head coach change, quote here. unquote mental prime coming in. Just like I said about old Matt Ryan two Stop years ago. Stop wearing his hat backwards, right? <laughs> you know, Colin Coward hates oh. the backwards hat guy. You can't be quarterback. Stafford's got his. His hat on straight. <laughs> you can't have your hat on backwards if you're a quarterback in the NFL. That is what Colin Coward says. It's hilarious. Um, I think the moral of the story here is it's you're cool. – It's cool. <laughs> I like a backwards hat. Yeah, but no grown man sh sh on the sideline of a football field should be wearing a backwards hat. Put it forward. They're playing freaking no, a game. I'm just kidding. They're playing a game. Let him wear his hat. I, like I started backwards. wearing my hat backwards lately because it makes me look younger. <laughs> If, and my, my wife goes, "What are you talking about?" And I looked her dead in the face, and I had my ba I had my hat on backwards, and I turned it around forward. I said, "See, look, That's older. five years at least." I said, "Older," and I turned it back around backwards. I said, "Younger, <laughs> older, younger." And she, she said, just "Mature, said, immature." She said, "Yeah." And then when you put that visor on, you just look like a douchebag. Oh, well, so. Visor is yeah. totally different. Game. Out of here! And so if you have wear a backwards, backwards visor, <laughs> immediate slap in the face. Oh, left hand open hand slap. All right, let's get back to business here. I think we, Golden Tate has earned the right to be here at 58, but at 29, if you look at this list here, it, it he's old in the tooth to be up. He's got Des Bryant a couple picks in front of him, and that's there's. I mean, the young guys have taken over the dynasty ADP in the yeah. top hundred. I mean, I, we were talking about that before. Holiday's proof. He's at 79. I mean, not to say that he he 
had an okay year last year, but I mean, he really hasn't done a ton to to prove out to be like I'm going to take him at 79, right? To be top 80 ADP. I mean, but you you know, geez, the the Lions are stacked on offense, and if they could do something with the scheme over there to open up, get a little bit of a running game going, I think the Lions. So they could offense, just get Deion Lewis. My Lions are about to blow <laughs> up. Yeah. All right, so I'm going to add one more guy to the mix here. We got Marvin and we got Tate. Let's throw Dez in here. And and who you got? Who's let's 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 talk about those three real quick. I think we all kind of came to an agreement on where we had some guys here a little bit. Well, it's it seems I thought that you could get Des for a song, but it seemed there's some Twitter uh, polls going around where you know it was like one ten and it was close and it was two two and Des won on the landslide. So I thought the days I thought the Des Bryant hate was getting absolute out of control. Maybe it's just a couple people that are really loud about it. Um, but I said it when we were on the open bar with um, J. Mike and, and um, Grab uh, Bag Fantasy. Grab Bag. Uh, it, I just don't think that the – yes, I get it. T- Des Bryant has been – he's done some pouting and he's done some uh, – maybe a little bit of lack of effort on a couple of plays that were on primetime TV and they replayed them 25 times on Sports Center. Tony Romo's not coming back anytime Tony soon. Tony Romo ain't coming back. But like, he ain't just, coming home. I just feel like the quarterback situation there, they walked it just overnight. Romo's back was broken in the preseason by the Seahawks and then Des just didn't have his boy throwing him the ball at perfect timing and perfect location on the field every time. I think some of the hate for Des Bryant is definitely unwarranted as a player. Now, as an attitude guy, sure, give it, give him all the hate you want. But I just think that his, I think he's got plenty of talent. I think he's got plenty of good football left in front of him as a twenty-nine-year-old man. Yeah, I mean, so you take in, so basically ADP shakes out Marvin Jones fifty-four, Des Bryant fifty-five, and then uh, Golden Tate at fifty-eight with JJ and Ronald Jones in between them. So we're going to remove those guys and basically. If Mark you had between, to take th- one of those three, who you got? I'm taking Des Bryant over those two guys. Who do you got, Jay Wayne? I know you're a perpetual Des Bryant hater, so what do you got? I've come around on Des, and then now I kind of want to jump back off of him. Um, but 55 is not the worst. That's a solid drop in his ADP that you've seen, that you haven't seen that. Like, this is no, as no. he's ever been here. He was number one like sure. three years ago. Right. I think I think I really just want to try and get up into the Wolf Fuller range <laughs> more right. than more than any of these guys, like I said. But uh, I mean, I guess I could take Dez over over these other guys. I would love to see Dez Bryant change teams. I could take Dez and then come back and take Galladay. I would love to see Dez Bryant go get to a, a piece team. of that Lions offense. Yeah, go to later. A, go to a team that doesn't have Ezekiel Elliott that needs to pound a rock all the time and has a good offensive line and throws it to a, a tight end and and you know couple of shifty slot receivers you, you probably ought to just take golden tate though they're right there right? i mean Dez he's has, safe like, he's never hurt Dez is like got a screw foot right Dez, yeah. Dez is Dez. not the healthiest of them all he's got attitude issues he's a tw- they're both base both base bothically <laughs> they're both basically tw- the same age and Dez has got a lot more miles on that frame than 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 tate does like if you're playing it safe here i think i think maybe i should go tate but then if you if you think you can have this resurgence to Des Bryant, get this Dallas Cowboys offense back, and they're going to bring him back, and Dak can figure out some things, and maybe he can work the slot some, and maybe you can see him jump back up on this list. But, I mean, he's not getting any younger. Neither of these picks are really that sexy Yeah, anymore. I mean, that's, we, I said it last year that when Golden Tate was 28, I, I said he's not going to do anything. I think he might have been at pick 48 last year, 50. I said he's not going to go forward, but he's going to hang around in this in this range for a while because he's consistent and he's it, he has those traits. He's not going to fall off. He, he's not you know a long speed kind of guy that he has to depend on that type of stuff. But like I'd see what you're saying about Des Bryant. He is he's 29 and he's he's not the shifty PPR monster guy that Golden Tate is. Like. For instance, Crabtree. Crabtree had a horrible last couple games. The whole offense, whole offense, fell off the rails for the for the Raiders last year. And Crabtree just tumbled into what no man's land. 100, 100, 110, something like that. Uh, Eighty five, I think. Eighty five. Okay, so that's not as bad as I thought. But like last year, he was up here in the fifties. So I mean, I can see if Des had a rough year, he would do some tumbling, and I, I that would be warranted if he had a rough year and he's turning thirty years old. But I just feel like. That the the hates got out of control and give me some cheap Des Bryant. I'm not saying he's a top, you know, a second round startup pick or anything like that. But I mean, 
still scored score touchdowns. So. He's he's still he's still at the top of the list. He's still of a the, ferocious player with the ball in his hands after the catch. Whatever that whatever that funky stat is going around about tight window balls, he's still one of the top guys on that list when he catches anything. Disclo- you know, you he's probably got more almost ruled touchdowns than anyone. In right, the him and Calvin were neck and neck with the almost t- real touchdown catches they took away. I mean, all I'm right. Just, so you got you're going Dez. Give me Dez. Who are you going? I'll go Dez. Going Dez. I. I think I want to. I think I want to take Marvin Jones over over both of these guys. Um, it's fair. It is fair. But I, like I said, I could go Dez and then come back and take Galladay and hopefully get a guy kind of like Marvin Jones in the future um, for the future here. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I'm thinking. I like it. Let's go to break real quick. I think we got time for one more segment. We'll uh, we'll just keep going down this list of ADP values that we got after the break. Boom. My boy Cooper Cup for your boy Cooper Cup, <laughs> big pop right there. I mean, well, he's way up high on this list. Way up on the list. The shade a tick before sixty. He's at fifty nine. That's a pretty impressive jump for old Cooper Cup. Who somebody needs a hero. He's your guy. <laughs> I need a hero. <laughs> uh, but so, so this is pretty interesting. We've been we've been all over this fifty to sixty was is, has been. Fun to talk about. We got a, a, a pretty long list. We're not even come close to getting through it today, but uh-uh. that's what this whole off season's for to keep addressing all this kind of stuff and the values and, and all that good stuff. But uh, here we got Cooper Cup at 59, which are you guys, if you have Cooper Cup, are you selling, holding, or are you buying? And are you buying into 59 ADP for Cooper Cup? Man, so this is tough, right? Cooper Cup, Mr. I bombed the combine, but that three cone drill, though. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Um, so this dude, let's see, Cooper Cup, 94 targets, led the team. They do spread it around very well. 62 receptions, seven drops, though. It's not a great number per pro football focus. Actually, Matt Kelly had one less drop Ooh. listed on his site, which I know he hates Cooper Cup. So I was <laughs> very surprised that was the one player he did inflate drops on. Normally aggressive on the drops. Right. Drops seem fluky to me, though, because the hands, for the most part, are very strong. It's basically what drove me to take him – Way back in our mock it up before you fuck it up, um, in the in the high contested catch rate, and you saw that translate into the NFL. Good after the catch, mean stiff arm. Twelfth in yak, thirteenth uh, in red zone receptions, but only five touchdowns. Um, but for a rookie, that's that's pretty good, I think. Um, and and and, uh, but I think you might should sell him this high. I think you should sell him high, man. Go one now. one year and done, getting one out on him. I mean, look how high he jumped up. And for what did you call him? An average slot wide receiver at best? Nothing wrong with getting out high. Did I, I say white like receiver? I meant to say wide receiver. <laughs> well, well, I he's think both half, of those. He's I a, think halfway through the season, or maybe even two thirds through the season, he was like top five of red zone targets, which is pretty crazy for a rookie receiver to be doing. It's not like six four. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like just he he's not a red zone threat. He was just flashing open and hitting a crossing route while the defensive, you know, maybe a play action on Todd Gurley. I mean, the Rams offense just Sean McVay's masterpiece. Yeah. You know. Um so Well, you know <laughs> Jared, <laughs> You don't even have to say anything. <laughs> Jared Goff's not any good. This offense Sean McVay's terrible. Coaching doesn't matter. Coaching doesn't matter. Scheme what? He what was scheme? he was calling the audibles at the play at the they were getting to the line quick so he could he could call the adjustments at the line. Mm-hmm. Maybe you should just get any piece you can of this offense. Maybe you should just maybe maybe buy him right here. Well, one of the things that I like about Cooper Cup is normally with the receivers first year, the you'll see, you know, no catches, no targets, a catch, two catches, three catches, a catch, two catches. And then maybe if he's playing well, by the end of the year, he might have five or six catches. But he starts the year with four for 76, week one in a touch, you know, and he, a couple catches here and there, week four, five or 60 in a touch. And so it just, it wasn't one of those things where he even had to build up to be in the playbook. He didn't even have to build up to be in the team's plans. He didn't have to build up to find targets. He started with targets. He ended with targets. And then there was a middle of the season there. Week 10, he gets six catches, six catches, eight catches, five catches, five catches. So, I mean, he was eaten towards the end of the season. There was no rookie wall there. Um, I definitely was not on the bandwagon of just, hey, Cooper Cup's going to be awesome. That was your thing there, Jay Wayne, and I'm not going to pretend like I was saying he was going to be awesome because I wasn't. But he definitely came out and played awesome for a rookie rookie wide receiver. Yeah. So, so are you buying at, at 59? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Nick <laughs> shuts that shit down. I'm not buying him now at, in the top six. I'm not going to buy him, you know, within – I'm not going to buy him one pick over Sterling Shepard. 
You know, it's 60 for Sterling Shepard. Give me Sterling Shepard. So just sure. Just like we were talking about the Lions a minute ago and about how, you know, what well, something's got to give here. There's a lot of a lot of guys coming in here and, you know, there's only so many targets to go around. So I think you kind of got a similar situation with the Rams, especially if they re-sign and bring back Sammy Watkins, which I don't know if they will. Nobody knows what exactly is going to happen, but you would have to think if they do bring back Sammy Watkins that, you know, you're going to, if you're bringing him back and paying him, you're going to feature him a little more. He came over late and then now you have the emergence of Robert Woods who played awesome. Uh, you got Cooper Cup who played awesome. You got Josh Reynolds on this roster who could could when he got his chances he was pretty good you got the the running back in in Gurley which you'll throw balls to you'll you got second these, in the team in targets right and you got these two tight ends that you want to get you want to develop one of these guys into a pass catching machine for you um so you know I think in this offense maybe something has to give now it's not to say that Sammy Watkins will come back I think I would wait the couple of picks and take Robert Woods over Cooper Cup for sure I mean he's probably just a little bit older than him and he's been in the league for <laughs> he's one year older than he's him. been in the league for a couple of years now, well, an old rookie coming out but Marvin Jones is a young veteran here he's 20 big, dang five well said he's about he's about to turn 26 in two weeks here I was just looking it up but and you know to give Cooper Cup his love on his rookie season in Buffalo, who couldn't complete passes forever, Robert Woods went forty for five eighty and three on his first year, and went sixty five for seven hundred and five in his second year. And four, I mean, he Robert Woods was consistently good with nobody throwing the ball in Buffalo for four years. We thought off air it was three years before he went to the Rams. He's been in the league five full seasons. Yeah, Robert Woods is a veteran, and he's about to turn twenty six. And he, you saw that savvy veteran presence out there. But the thing with the Rams is, is they were tops in points per game. Yep. It's 29.9, so basically 30. 10th in yards per game with 361. 10th in net pass yards per game. 24th in attempts and 7th in yards per attempt. I mean... Yeah, that's what I was saying. Maybe you balling. should just get a piece of this offense. Right, that's, I mean, that's kind of what I'm saying. I mean, they were, they were the number one in, in average uh, yards per reception at, at 12.6. So, I mean, all that stuff is, is, is fairly positive. They're efficient with their with their pass game and what they're doing and for McVeigh to come over I mean people will probably eventually catch up to you a little bit but you'd have to think a mind like that is staying kind of one step ahead of the competition agreed well the, the key thing is like you mentioned is Sammy Watkins they either tag him or sign him long term but if when you were mentioning that possibility of Sammy Watkins coming back my mind just said firepower so and I said this a lot last year when um, Sam Bradford moved over to the Vikings and just different things like that. Um, you know, Sammy comes in late to the Rams and he doesn't kill it in the targets or the receptions spot, but he crushes in touchdowns. And for the a limited amount of time he spends on the field for these guys, which to me just me it just shows like. Like you said, if you're going to keep Sammy, you're not going to keep him, and you're not going to pay him the money that he's worth, and not feature him some more so does that take away from cooper cup and robert woods maybe a little bit you got gerald everett who's the first pick of this regime when the when the sean mcveigh comes over and takes control they didn't have a first round draft pick and the second round pick the first thing they did was take gerald everett and tyler higby wasn't playing terrible last year and todd Gurley's all of a sudden a candidate for 90 catches so there's a lot of volume in this offense and those stats you just read don't lie that was the first season and mike um uh, Shannon, Kyle Shanahan's offense in in Atlanta blew up the second year. And I guarantee you that the Rams are going to look even better next year. How could you think that what the transition that this offense just went through with Jared Goff and is, doesn't even know which way to sunsets, Bo? <laughs> like, <laughs> come on. And they just went and got off. Unless it was set or rise. I don't but. know. He, <laughs> either he don't one. Know. He didn't do either one. He, if you know one, you can just do the opposite. <laughs> you got the, the other. Answer. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of a both or none <laughs> kind of thing here. <laughs> right. So just that ridiculousness that was there is just you got to imagine a step forward for the entire offense. And if if Sammy's there, I don't know how much that hurts everybody else. But let me just tell you about how awesome Robert Woods was for a minute before he hurt his shoulder. Week three. He got it. He started the season a little slower than Cooper Cup. I don't know which what was going on there, but week three goes six for a hundred, 
two nothing in really week four, but then he goes five for sixty, five for seventy, five for sixty, four for seventy and two, eight for a buck seventy and two, lighting the world on fire. Eight for eighty, blows his shoulder up, misses three games, comes back six for forty five and a touch, and doesn't do a whole lot week sixteen. Oh, Robert but Woods was Robert, you had to have him in your lineup. Bro, you couldn't put him on the bench. No. We got one league where we got massive receivers. We got Diggs and Landry and Amari Cooper and Crabtree and we and somebody else I'm missing in there and Robert Woods was starting every single week on that Got to. in that stretch. I mean, the the Rams are scoring the most points in the league, and they're the best in uh, yards per reception. Now they're kind of low in total receptions, which was twenty second, but they're very efficient because they were getting efficiency right. and getting to and scoring the points. Right. They were leading. You don't have a million catches when you're getting downfield blow right. like Robert Woods and Cooper Cup and Gurley was scoring from ninety yards away. Yeah, when you got Gurley, you, you don't need to you t- don't get a million catches when you get down the field and actually put it in the end zone because your drives might not be but four or five plays sometimes. So in, in a startup for me personally, I'm going to wait and I'm going to take Robert Woods and probably pass on Cup if I have Cup. Completely agree. I'm okay with hanging on to Cup. Yeah, and and not doing Rides anything with them. So, but what if Sammy Watkins does resign with this team? Do you what? How do you? Which, which one of those guys would you kind of want to get rid of? If you had to get rid of one, if I had to get rid of one, still I'm going to lean on. I think I'm, I'm going to get I'm rid of Cup because maybe he has a little bit more perceived value. I'm keeping exactly. That's true. He's got a, a basically a three quarter round value bump over Robert Woods here, and maybe because he's a little younger, and Robert Woods still had that stink of Buffalo on him. But I don't know I, what it is, but people just started immediately loving Cooper Cup. Yeah, like that, they hated him. He hit the, they loved him, and then he blew the combine. He's like a folk hero, right? Yeah. Well, he blew the combine, then everybody hated him, and then he's, and then now everyone's just like, oh my gosh, Cooper Cup, like you when you need a hero. Well, Cooper, <laughs> it's got to be fast. That's the highlight. Music, I don't know. By the way, I don't know if I saw more guys sliding to the ground in one direction and the balls go in the other direction and they caught it like Cooper Cup made some incredible catches this year these were not all all in the bread basket catches these were hands catches falling down balls going wrong Cooper Cup impressed me this year like I was saying earlier he definitely played a lot better than I ever thought he would and but there is that value he's a cult hero and uh, you know if you can I would also rather have Sterling Shepard you mentioned that earlier I think might have got passed over because you were kind of in mid-sentence but you said you'd rather have Sterling I think I'd rather have Sterling Shepard over Cooper Cup as well. Yeah, that's but fair. If you got Cooper Cup on your team, enjoy it. Grab some catches, but it wouldn't be to like maybe package him up and find your way into a Will Fuller, um, just to bring that back around one Old more time. Will's really Old getting Will's some name drops on this podcast. Or here. like, it's who like, knew? I didn't know you loved this guy so if much. If you're at fifth, if you're at average, you know this is an average out of five different drafts. But you're in the top. The end of the fifth round is Cooper Cup here. So if you're got, if you're looking at Cooper Cup and there's a couple picks to be had. And there's Deshaun Watson on the on the on the um, queue there, and there's OJ Howard, a big name like that, a youngster tight end, Kenyon Drake. You know these two guys are about to get taken. What trade back a couple picks, pick up a little bit of equity somewhere, and then wait on Robert Woods. Yeah, that's fine with me. I'm down. I'm down. Down. But I'm, yeah, like Jay said, just grab yourself a piece of this Rams offense because McVay ain't going anywhere, and they got it working. It's very fun to watch. It is. Hope you didn't trade Todd Gurley. <laughs> there were so many people being like that we just want to make we almost get it in every single episode we every week because we were we were one of the few people that we knew telling you not to trade talk early and in like, the off season we said there was we were banging the drum for not trading todd garley and don't listen to the noise about deshaun watson he's going to be good and then all throughout the season, we said, oh, we yeah. have to say, well, don't trade you know, Todd Gurley because his schedule's about to get bad. Strength of schedule's going to get bad, so you're going to want to get rid of Todd Gurley. Oh, Shut up. Yeah. Yikes. You're dumb. Yeah. Just tune in and do what we say. <laughs> all right. Well, I think, uh, is this a wrap? Good players don't matter. You just, you you, right. want, you hang on to the good player and right. the strength of schedule comes up. And the reason that you Ride have an, out. an elite player like that is because strength of schedule doesn't matter Ride it out. for that particular player. Right. That's right. They're matchup proof, and that's why you take those kind of guys and you hold on for dear life. Well, if there's something coming, all right, say there's a buzzsaw coming and the Jacksonville Jaguars doesn't give up an inch. Okay, put him on your bench for a minute. Put him back in the next game. Don't trade him away. This is yeah. dynasty fantasy football. Well, I mean, Todd Gurley is not coming out of my lineup. Well, no, Jaguars. never, obviously, after last year. But I'm just saying, if, you get, if you're coming up against a buzzsaw, you don't let it affect your, I mean... This is, this, is why, this is why you try not to get – you take all the highs and lows and, and kind of put it together and, and yeah. 
you can't because you get down on you. Somebody got down on Gurley and somebody bought Gurley in the offseason. And now they've completely turned their franchise around. And the guy that sold him is up the creek right now because he's probably sold him for way too cheap. And if he had him on his team, he'd probably be competing for a championship. Instead, the guy who just bought Gurley just won. 100 percent agree. And I and I saw this one I not involved, but I saw this trade go down a year and a half ago. And I've, it's been I've never just been able to forget it. Somebody gave away Gurley for Kevin White. And now that Gurley team is good and the Kevin White team is not. <laughs> That's just a like crazy what you trade. said. That's a crazy trade. Well, we I got I like a fantasy suicide. <laughs> <if> that was, <laughs> like we mentioned, we have a, a, a pretty long list. We knew we wouldn't get through it all today. We'll save it for another day. Um, but I think that's going to do it for, for our time today. We're a little short on time right now. Thanks for stopping in. Yeah, hit us up on Twitter at the FF Dynasty. At IMC Myers, Dynasty Big Co., J. Wayne's World. Put ads in front of all those. That's us. Be sure to hit subscribe on your platform of choice. iTunes, Podbean, Google Play, Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio. Please go on iTunes and give us a five-star review. All you got to do is tap the five stars. Don't even have to write anything if you don't want to. Nope. Drop us a line if you like, though. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. You've been listening to the FF Dynasties Married to the Game.